In the third of our Inside Sevens Uncovered series, we delve into the increasingly professional world of Sevens and ask whether the Olympic version of the sport can now provide players with an alternative answer to a full-time rugby career. Our guys aren't getting salaries that are going to let them roll around in Bentleys in South West London, but they're going to survive and it gives them an opportunity. And for a young player, the money and the, op and the options are increasing you know, on a monthly rate, really. You know, our guys are, are on anything from sort of the middle teens to, uh, to 30, 40,000 pounds. I think the average wage in the Premiership is 70,000 pounds now. And I think in the future, we're going to have to have sevens players that are, are, are getting close to that if we're going to compete with uh, the, the top end nations that are putting more money into it every year. We've put eight contracted players, that will probably increase next year. It's never going to be a huge amount of players, so there's going to be only a small opportunity for, for guys to, to get a full-time career at international level. You go around to some of the Olympic teams at other sports and you say, well, Rio's a long way away, and they say, well, it's 68 months, it's not very, not very far at all. Some of the guys in our team have set their sights on, on going and getting in the Great Britain side and, and being a career sevens player. We get lots of interest in commercial opportunities for our side. So I think the money's there and it's just making sure that everybody's a little bit more savvy on how they're operating off the field to turn these guys into um, household names. For the stay-at-home heroes of reigning World Series champion Samoa, it's a different story entirely. People back home have, you know, really stepped up and, I mean, the government, and I have offered them uh, positions in, in government, uh, in corporations, and, and they've been uh, getting jobs there, and as well as, um, you know, been released to play sevens. It's nothing compared to getting a contract overseas, but, you know, at least they're, they're settled in, in back home now. The boys, you know, they get up early in the morning. We have training at seven, and we finish at eight, because they have to go and work. Um, so we have to pick, the, they have to catch the bus, say, about six, if they live get into town and we pick them up from town in the, in the, in the truck and then we take them up to where we train and then at 8 o'clock we drop them back into town where they need to go to work and then the same thing happens, we pick them up at 3.30, make sure they finish at 5 to catch the last bus to go home and um, you know, these, uh, they don't get paid for it, they, get, <laughs> they, they just do it for love and the culture of the game back home at the moment. Everyone's sort of sevens fever back home, so um, all the youngsters coming through are all um, you know, looking to play sevens. So professional in attitude and ethos, not yet in salary. And the same can be said for Kenya. Most of the boys really have to either go to work or school from eight to five and then try and uh, run, uh, catch up with training from, uh, from 5.30 onwards, um, which really is uh, is a hard uh, task, but in terms of uh, getting a structure right and uh, trying to come up with the, with the professional aspect, definitely we are going uh, into either semi-pro or professional uh, sevens rugby. The way players, in, let's say England players, are, are paid compared to the Kenyans is very different. In their full-time professionals, so we can't really compete in terms of uh, of, of that. Well, there's another try for Collins in Jura for Kenya. Most of us are not professional. We just play rugby, I think, part-time. Part so we have our jobs and our studies to go back to when we, when we go back home. And I had personally had exams. And uh, I think three or four of the other guys, or the other boys who miss Dubai also had work commitments. We have to come to the tournaments with, with a professional attitude. If you do go to the game and start thinking, oh, these guys are professional and we are all professional, I, th I don't think that we'll, we'll have to perform the way we, we are expected to perform. We try to put that all behind our minds and just play the game and enjoy it. And what of the unrivaled giant of Olympic and professional sport, the United States of America? As a professional paid sport, uh, we're not there. But I believe that professionalism isn't just about money. It's about behavior, attitude, and taking on uh, a true responsible and a professional nature in everything that you do. We realize to be able to compete with teams that had contracted players and, and were moving to a more professional paid environment that uh, we had to work and train just as hard. 
We believe that we are as professional as any team out there. The only difference is we just don't do it full time. I put together a business plan and having a staff of five full time staff members and a squad of 15 athletes per year, uh, I estimated $2.1 million. That's what the program would get. So each athlete would average anywhere between $35,000 to $55,000 and then they would all have bonuses so that they have incentives to, to go beyond that. It's not gonna be for everybody. Athletes in the NBA, the NFL, probably 80% when you talk to them, it's all about money. There's Miles Craigwell. That's good skill just coming from American football. I'm definitely motivated by money, but I, I, you know, I, weigh, I weigh the two things out. You know, traveling the world, meeting new friends. You can't put a price on that. You know, playing football, yeah, I could travel domestically, and uh, yeah, you get uh, good money, but I wouldn't be able to see the world and, you know, just have fun learning a new sport, and um, I really cherish that and just really a blessing.